This video is brought to you by Insta360 and their new 8K 360 camera, the X4. When you think of Honda, you might think of some of their iconic cars. Cars like the NSX, S2000, Civic Type R. But Honda has some really awesome cars that are less popular. Example one, the Honda Fit. Now I've owned my Honda Fit for almost three years and it's been such an awesome car. It's a great daily driver, it's fun, it's roomy, it's great on gas, and it's super reliable. But it has some issues. The interior is cheap, sound deadening is mediocre, road and wind noise is really loud, it doesn't have cruise control, and things like the air conditioning are meh. Now all these issues stem from the fact that the Honda Fit was built as an economy car. And so this led me to wanting a new daily. Something that wasn't an economy car, something that had a bit more luxury, but just like the Fit, it had to be fun and underrated. So that's why I got this. It's a Honda Accord. Now I know what you're thinking, okay? But do you remember what the fit looked like when I first bought it? Yeah, okay, don't doubt me. This car is special and this car is going to be awesome. In order to show you that, let's go for a drive. I mean, on the inside, this thing feels like a Bentley compared to the Fit. See, unlike the Fit, this thing isn't really an economy car. I mean, it's still a Honda, but it wasn't built for the purpose of being cheap. Meaning, it's smooth, it feels solid, it's got good sound insulation, road noise is very, very quiet, and that becomes more apparent when you go to the highway. First of all, you row through the gears. <laughs> Yes, it's manual. I'll talk about that in a second. But you get up to speed, you merge onto the highway, go ahead and turn cruise control on, set that at 70 miles an hour, sit back, relax. Oh, I'm gonna turn on my automatic dual zone climate control. Oh wait, it's already on. I couldn't even tell. I could accelerate with the AC on. Wouldn't you look at that? All right, we're approaching the next car. We're gonna coast down a couple miles an hour. Grandpa's going slow. All right, you know what, Never mind. we're gonna drop a deer and pass them. Sorry, bucko. And it's got a nice sound system too from the factory. It's got subwoofers, it's got nice speakers. Turn that bad boy on and you listen. But it's also smaller stuff like sunglasses holder, more than one dome light. It's got a nice center console with a pop-out armrest. So like I can just chill here and cruise way nicer than the fit got good cup holders the seats are comfortable and they're leather and they're heated wow all those things add up to making this thing just much nicer to drive every day especially on longer highway drives but but you guys probably don't care too much about the daily drivability of this thing because you're not daily driving it you care about it being cool and it is cool because this accord is one of the rare Accords that came with the J30, which is a three liter V6, making about, I think it was 250 horsepower, plus a six speed manual transmission. Six speed, six speed. I think I'm out of spun. So it looks as if that made 228 wheel horsepower and 211 pound feet of torque. And you can kind of see when VTEC kicks in, you know, right there, the rate accelerates a little bit. And I believe that's the VTEC. 
And I mean, it's just a smooth power curve all the way up to red line. And look how it holds it at red line. Very nice. I think that's all we're gonna do. There's some interesting smells coming from up here. Who knows what that was? <laughs> Here we go. And then we just chill, go back down the hill. Anyway, back to the video. Now apparently that'll accelerate this car to 60 miles an hour in just under six seconds, which would make it faster than the turbocharged Honda Fit. Hmm. Let's do some zero to 60 hits and a roll race to find out. 30. 60. <laughs> Launch was terrible. Lots of wheel hop. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> but man, once it gets out of the first gear, sheesh. Yeah, 6.7. I think that's already faster than the fit. And I can do better than that. And we're going to try to do better than that. Thirty. Sixty. Six point nine. Oh damn, that was worse. What? All right, I bogged it. I bogged it. Thirty. Sixty. Oh god. Oh, did the clutch break up? <laughs> Blow up? The clutch felt really weird there for a second. I just held it through the, uh, the wheel hop and 6.6, .6, let's go. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Oh man. <laughs> Dead even. Oh, I knew it. I knew it was going to be so close. Maybe at the top end. But you know what? Now is a perfect opportunity to talk about the Insta360 X4, because that is the sponsor of this video, and that's what I got all of those clips with and some more clips later in the video with. This camera is awesome. It's Insta360's new generation 360 cam. This thing can do 8K 30 FPS footage or 5.7K 60 FPS footage or 4K 100 FPS footage, all in their amazing 360 view. It captures literally every square inch around the camera so that you never miss a shot. You put it somewhere, it films everything, then afterwards you go onto their software, either on your phone or on a computer, and you can easily choose where the camera's looking, whether it's horizontal or vertical footage. That's how I got the camera to look at different parts of the interior while I was talking about it. That's how I got the camera to look at the fit as it was coming by. And in my opinion, this footage looks so good. I mean, it's like DSLR quality, but 360 degrees. Now the other cool thing you can do with this camera is impossible third person views. You put it on a selfie stick like this and the camera automatically removes the selfie stick from the footage. So you can get a lot of cool stuff with that. You can get the third person GTA car shots as long as you have their awesome car mount as well, which is really easy to set up. Well, first you put on the main bar and you use the vacuum, seal those suction cup mounts down nice and tight. Then you put the selfie stick in there. Then you put the third mount in. Vacuum that cup down. Extend your stick. Put your X4 on. You can adjust kind of the height and angle you want it at. Of course, checking the app to make sure it looks good. Or the screen on it. And then you just tighten everything down. Boom. Real life GTA. Really what all this comes down to is versatility. Inside a car, outside a car, mountain biking, vlogging, hiking, it can do it all. Insta360 has just, in general, killed it with this camera. So if you're interested in getting one, I'll have a link in the description down below and up there in the cards. Check it out, it helps support the channel as well. Huge thank you to Insta360 for sending me the camera and for sponsoring this video. But let's keep talking about the Accord. The V6 comes with a couple other benefits. One is sound. Four cylinders sound cool, but I'm a little old of them. 
I've owned a lot of four cylinders, a lot of turbocharged four cylinders. This V6 sounds awesome when it's modified. Since it's a V6, it's much smoother and it's got more torque. So things like even like the AC compressor kicking on and off, don't feel it. You're in traffic and you want to accelerate, you don't have to downshift. You can kind of just give it a little bit of throttle, boom. And you can put a turbocharger on them and instead of making 170 wheel horsepower, you can make like 400 wheel horsepower. Just saying. Now there are some cool things also about this specific car. If you know anything about seventh gen Accords, you know they're usually kind of clapped out. Especially the ones with the V6 and the six speed manual. People like to buy them and abuse them and modify them. And so, you know, 10 owners later, they're not the nicest pieces. This car right here, I'm the second owner of it. I bought it from the original owner who purchased it new. In addition to that, it's only got 180,000 miles, which is relatively low for these cars. It was maintained decently. Is it perfect? No. Blech. Blech. Like, what in the hell, bro? Also, blech. And it does have a few mechanical things. When I first purchased it, it needed an O2 sensor, big deal. In addition to that, right now, you push the brakes, steering wheel will go blah, 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 definitely needs new brakes. And if you go over a bump under acceleration, kind of feels like the entire engine, cross member, all that stuff up front, it's gonna fall out of the car. So I, I, it definitely is needing some bushings or suspension upgrades somewhere up here. And I will say probably the worst thing about this car, especially compared to the fit, is that it doesn't feel like a sports car. The fit kind of feels like a Miata. This feels like a sedan, like an Accord, like a car you daily drive that's kind of luxurious. But I have a feeling you can kind of make that better with some modifications. And so guys, that is the plan. Round two of building the ultimate daily driver. We're gonna start off with things like coilover, suspension upgrades, wheels and tires, big brake kit, custom exhaust. Let's redo the interior, add some tech, add some race. Let's make the driving experience better. And then to wrap it all up, Let's put a big single turbo on it and make some big horsepower. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The first thing this car needs is a little bit of love. It hadn't been driven much when I bought it. It had been sitting for a while when I bought it. And so first things first, I think this thing needs a good detail. I was originally gonna repaint this car, but I think at this point, the paint looks pretty good. It needs a good polish, it needs a front bumper, and a rear bumper. So let's get started. Oh, and it definitely needs new headlights too. <laughs> Last time this thing got washed, probably over a year. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, come on. So now the car is washed and dried. I bet you on camera it looks almost perfect, but when I highlight the imperfections, it does get a little rough. The paint's got a lot of dirt in it. I think it's like sap from this thing probably sitting underneath a tree. And it also has obviously just lots of swirl marks. I'm really more worried about like the sappy stuff. Swirl marks, whatever. I'm, this, you know, this is gonna be my daily driver. It doesn't have to look that fancy. But we're gonna give this paint restoration a shot. We're gonna start by clay barn in the car, which will hopefully get that dirt out of that paint. And then we're going to step it up to a polish. I finally purchased a proper pack of foam pads, so hopefully this will help. Got the polisher, got some compound that was rated decently on Amazon. I also have new headlights and a couple of other surprises to clean up the car. Admittedly, I've never been that great at paint correction, but I've never tried it on a base coat, clear coat car. All the cars I've ever worked with have just been single stage. And I've heard that's more difficult. We're gonna see. If I can get this looking decent, I'll take it. I'm gonna go ahead and start by just doing one little corner of the hood, just real quick to see see how she, 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 how she does. Okay, we're gonna start it with a light cut pad. Oh, this is definitely looking good. This gets me excited.
That's before. That's after. You can still see a lot of stuff in it, but I didn't try very hard. I think I can hit it with a, a more aggressive cut at the beginning and go down a couple more steps, but let me look at that. If the entire car looks like that, I'll be happy. Also, I'm not sure if you can see, it's got like a blue flake in it. It's very, it's a very pretty color. But now I gotta do that to the entire car. Starting with the clay bar. Looks about the same, but it, uh, you know, feels nice. Feels like it should be nice paint. <laughs> now, before I start polishing, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the headlights, kind of fix up this bumper a little bit, and kind of just tape up some of this rubber trim so we don't stain that with the polish. There we go. Removed, taped off some of the black trim that might get stained. We're ready to give this a shot. Turn up. Still got all that shit in the paint. I mean, it feels nice. It's definitely better. Still definitely shit in it, but it's definitely better. Just going for better. Ain't going for perfect. All right, just finished the roof. Let me show you what we're working with. You know, this is the panel we haven't done, and that's the roof. You can see there's definitely still stuff in it, but if you just look at the overall color, it's much better. Definitely far from perfect, and uh, not exactly what I was hoping for, but I think this compound just is not aggressive enough to cut all the imperfections out of that, that clear coat. I think I'm happy with it. It's good enough, but man, every time I go to correct a car, I realize why this is not meant for me. I am impatient and a perfectionist, and that combo creates lots of frustration when you're trying to correct the paint. I think we're gonna go ahead and do this hood. but it's pretty good. We're done. Whole car all the way around has been polished. This side, the sides look awesome. Roof, hood, trunk, not as great. That got the brunt of the sap, but it looks pretty good. It's definitely like clean. But now that that's done, we can move on to the next step. Some nice wax. From this angle, car might not look that different, but man, I am so happy with the way this turned out. As I keep saying, not perfect, but the color of the car is almost a different color in person. It's black in the shade, and then when you get it into like, eh, you can't tell, but in the perfect lighting, it's like a dark blue slash purple because of all of the, uh, all of that flake that's in there. We can install the headlights, the front bumper, and then there's one last thing I wanna to do to the car in this video.
And there we are. We've got our new headlights in. The bumper has been repaired. Looks good on camera. Looks much better in person. Still not perfect. And then we've got our new fog lights in and our new red emblems. <laughs> It looks pretty good. I mean, this, is, this thing's way cleaner than the Fit ever was. Fit looked clean on camera, but it was not this clean. I think now it's time for modifications. The eBay headlights and the red emblems don't count. I'm talking about things like this. Aluminum flywheel, upgraded clutch to hold all that horsepower we're gonna need when there's a big spoolie boy on this thing. And man, a bunch of other parts. I've already bought so much stuff for this thing and I'm so excited. I hope you guys are excited too. It's gonna be an awesome build. There's gonna be simple stuff, simple bolt-ons, and there will be some really cool, unique fabrication. Huge thank you to Insta360 yet again for sponsoring this video. Their X4 camera is incredible, and if you wanna check it out, yet again, link in the description and in the cards. If you wanna support the channel in another way, please check out Patreon. There you'll get early access to videos and access to exclusive content. The Patrons knew about this car like a week ago, and they're gonna know about all the details on the build, way sooner than you guys are. So huge thank you to anyone who does that. Huge thank you to Honda for making awesome vehicles. I might be a Honda guy now, guys. I might be a Honda guy. I mean, like what other vehicle can you get for four grand? It's an incredible daily, but then it also has a strong engine and transmission where you can put a turbo on it, almost triple the horsepower and be good to go. <laughs> Maybe an LS, that's about it. Can't buy those for four grand though. All right, see you guys.